What's going on everybody? It's Childish, you're back at it again, coming at you with another video for Calibria Crystal Guardians. In today's video, we finally get to showcase our newest team build for the Evo Chimera. And then once we're done with that, we'll go over the runes and then we'll finish off with some summons. So uh, before we get into the video though, y'all know what I gotta do. I gotta give a huge shout out to Calibria Crystal Guardians. They are sponsoring this video yet again. So if you guys wanna show your support, head on over to the YouTube description down below, click on the link so you can download the game, install it for free. That would greatly support the channel. So uh, let's Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, Eva Chimera, uh, for those that are relatively new to the game, this is something that uh, we start looking into after we push through the scenario stages, after we've, uh, you know, built some of our dungeon teams and collected a couple of rooms, or, you know, over the course of the time. Why is everybody uh, going for this one? Why is everyone so focused on this? What? Well, a couple of things. One, this right here, this conflict right here, uh, really, really strong rune. Uh, you'll be able to collect these, put them on your units and drastically uh, improve the amount of damage you could do in anywhere you utilize it, right? In addition to that, we're also gonna get some cores as you guys can see right here. These are gonna be uh, a basically ways to enhance the runes that you've already collected here. Now, funny enough, I'm looking at this drain quartz here right now because I actually got, uh, for my wish, I got a drain quartz, which I'll probably show you guys a little bit here. It's my first legendary drain rune, so <laughs> I'm gonna be able to use this uh, drain quartz here. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get into the run. Uh, and then while we're doing the run, I'll go ahead and showcase, or I'll go ahead and talk about the teams are the units that I'm using. And then at the end of the run, we'll go ahead and showcase the room so you guys can see what we're rocking here. So um, on my, I guess my left, your right, my, I think that's right. But uh, I got Elven Queen in the front line here. She's gonna be the one that's gonna give us some support here, providing the invulnerability and the immunity for three turns on the immunity and of course invulnerability for one turn. Now, I, I understand that not everyone's gonna have this unit. Um, so obviously you guys can't take advantage of it, but if you do have this unit, th this is definitely gonna be a great unit for the front line here. A uh, ton of support, ton of utility. Um, it's gonna allow uh, your party to stay alive so that this boss doesn't put that nasty uh, debuff on that basically isolates your abilities and not allow you to cast them here. So uh, the next one that I got on the right of her is gonna be uh, Jungle Heart. So Jungle Heart again is a really good option, a free to play option for you guys uh, if you have not uh, built it. So it's going to provide yourself a little bit of a heal. It's going to have some immunity. And probably the most important thing about it is it's going to provide a way of extending your buffs. And this is going to be very, very important as we get into a couple of the units in the front line here. So again, Whatever cast, whatever bus you cast here, if you speed everything correctly here, you'll you know set up your units, have them uh, provide the buffs that are going to provide, and then she'll be able to use her skill three to extend those buffs and keep you alive. And why is this super important? Because again, we're talking about uh, having that immunity. Uh, and so if you have a unit like Elven Queen, uh, which of course I'm utilizing now to get the first turn, I'm able to extend that buff from one turn of invulnerability to four, uh, three turns of an immunity. I'm gonna be able to extend it to two and four. It's gonna be really, really nice. It's gonna be able to keep me uh, that much more alive. Now, uh, the next one that I wanna talk about here, Rock Golem, this unit is an absolute powerhouse, okay? Um, I could not believe the strength of this unit because it's just, it's crazy. This is the one unit that's literally keeping me alive, all right? So, uh, Rock Golem, okay, if you guys did not know, he has a really, really unique passive that essentially provides the shield based on a percentage of his max HP um, for the entire party when he gets hit here. And this actually, um, it, it benefits you uh, if the opponent has some kind of like multi-hit, which of course this boss does have on those jumps that you're seeing right now. So uh, this is a very, very strong ability, providing the uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, give you some sustain, uh, sustain that's not really controlled, right? It just kind of comes as you get hit. It's really, really nice just in case some of the units in the back line get hurt pretty bad. So again, uh, if you do not have this one built, you're definitely going to one-hit ability. This is a great unit to go ahead and incorporate in your starter team. Now, um, I could possibly take it out and provide a little bit more damage, but for the time being right now, because of the fact that I have this consistent, I'm just gonna take advantage this right now uh just just for the time being here so uh the next one that i want to go ahead and talk about is the druid now there are i mean we, we don't have to get into it of ours uh druid and how useful it is in this game we've talked about it many many times probably one of the best if not the best nat for healer in the game you can make an argument for one of the best healers in the game um provides a defense buff provides a counter attack provides a little bit of heal over time really really strong definitely worth your time to do now uh the reason why this unit is in here. Obviously the defense buff is extremely important, providing a little bit more mitigation for your party so you can stay alive, especially on those big jumps. Uh, but more importantly, the counter attack. The counter attack is pretty darn clutch here. And you're gonna see right now, uh, once he provides the buff here, um, he's gonna bring up the counter attack. We're gonna have Jungle Heart follow through with the extension uh, of the buffs here. So we have that counter attack. Your boss is gonna attack. And now you see all my units 
uh, providing a little bit of damage from that counterattack. And not only they're providing the counterattack buffs, or sorry, they're providing the uh, damage, but they're also providing any kind of utility that I'm getting uh, through my uh, skill ones here. So if I have some kind of defense break, if I have an attack break or something like that, any and all opportunity to provide, provide more debuffs is very, very important. So again, while there are certain healers out there that provide, uh, you know, like a defense buff or whatnot here, I feel like the Druid is just one of those units that if you're looking to build a starter team, you're probably going to have to wait to build it. Um, I, I just, for me personally, um, it is just, it's, it's too strong of a unit not to incorporate it in your lineup. And if you have uh, checked out a lot of other guides out there, um, this is a very, very strong unit for uh, speed compositions, being able to utilize that counterattack with, you know, very, very heavy amount of uh, damage dealing units in the back line, most notably the Holy Swordsman, which we will get uh, be getting to here in a little bit. Now, uh, the next unit that I want to talk about is the Demonic Swordsman. I kind of want to skip this unit uh, that's on the far left here on the back line. You probably know why in a little bit here. But uh, Demonic Swordsman, for me, guys, uh, I don't think this is one of the units that everybody needs to use. But I noticed when I was running my first team, uh, that the Demonic Swordman just gave me that attack bar boost that allowed me to cycle my turns and help me out here. Because when I first got started, you guys already know, we talked about it in the previous video where I basically did not have uh, the skill ups that I needed. I was not saving my Nat 3 skill ups. So I unfortunately lost a lot of uh, matches um, that I probably wouldn't have had if I actually had the reduction of the uh, cooldown here. So it's very, very uh, nice. It's a nice little safeguard. Uh, you know, being able to get that attack bar so that you can get your skills, uh, cycle your skills a little bit better. So I found it very, very useful. And if you do have it and you want to throw it in the back line, I'm, I'm sure it can do uh, wonders for you as it has done for me, okay? Now the next unit here needs no introduction. This unit is the number one unit out there to build for your evil layer team. The one, the only, the Holy Swordsman. Now you guys are probably like, oh, I've heard about this, I've seen this one. This is the one that everyone he builds. Like they build two or three copies of it. Like, why do they do that? And and I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Okay, I was sitting here like, why, why we gotta build two to three to four? Like, what is the point? But let me tell you why. Okay, so this unit right here. Okay, skill one, ignore defense. Super strong. Obviously, not every single time we're gonna have that defense break like you see right now. So, any at all opportunity to ignore the defense mechanic and just do a ton of damage here, um, is gonna be really nice. But in addition to that, what you probably don't know is that that skill one also has a 50% chance of double attack. And that's like, that's something that can chain over time, right? So you may hit like right now, it was a, it was a hit, but I think, I think I got one 50% double attack here, but it's one of those abilities that you can keep on procking and get a ton of hits. I've got upwards of eight hits with that unit. Um, and that's just one. So think about the fact that you, you know, couple that out with, you know, two Holy Swordsmen or three Holy Swordsmen or four Holy Swordsmen, that's a ton of damage um, that you can be uh, utilizing here. So in addition to that though, uh, Holy Swordsman has a way of buffing up his uh, attack as well as his critical rate. So if you have a unit like Elven Queen that's providing the attack buff for your party and maybe it's not up right now, he's gonna be able to bring in that amount of attack, uh, that attack buff that you're looking for. Look at that, look at that many hits, man, it's crazy. And also provide the critical rate so that you can, uh, min max your runes to get uh, a ton of value here and, and what i mean by that is that even though you guys know when we build our attack damage dealers we're looking for a certain amount of critical rate uh to justify running the critical damage right running the critical damage rune on the fourth slot um now it, it, when it comes down to it you might have to finagle your runes a little bit just to get enough crit rate to justify it but however because of the fact that he buffs his own critical rate and he has a little uh leader critical rate ability um it makes it that much more easier for you to incorporate this unit and do a ton of damage while minimizing the amount of critical rate you use and if you do that you can essentially use some of those uh runes with critical rate subsets or maybe wild rune sets on other units other damage healers to go ahead and help you out now Let's go ahead and talk about my two wild cards in this team. And this is going to be great for you guys because some of you guys have these units, some of you guys don't. And so I want to go ahead and talk about it. Now, Spider Queen, what are you doing, Childish? This is not a Holy Swordsman. Why are you using it? Why don't you just double up, triple up, or whatever like that? Well, uh, let's 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 give you a reality check. When we're building these compositions, we're not going to have every single thing every uh, YouTuber says or every streamer says or whatever like that. We got to use what we got. So um, if you don't know, uh, the Spider Queen has a really, really good a kit not just for farming but also for the uh uh for for this particular boss here so if you guys didn't know this skill right here you know basic damage right 360 percent of attack but one of the things that you might not have noticed is that it has a 25 percent chance to ignore defense so again if we get lucky on the proc here we can do massive amounts of damage i've done upwards of 50k on this ability which technically i think is more than what i can do <laughs> for my holy swordsman unless my holy swordsman procs like crazy um in addition to that we went ahead and skilled up or sorry we didn't we went ahead and switched over to the single target ability here Obviously, we did that because this ability does a massive amount of damage, dealing 565% uh, of attack. 
uh, and damage. Uh, the whole 85% chance to bind a target, we're not concerned about that. We're just looking to do a ton of damage here versus the AoE ability that we would use with farming. So yeah, we're getting a lot of value out of this. And uh, for the last go here, I'm just using this one for the time being. I'm pretty sure that there's probably um, a, couple, a couple other options to utilize, but uh, I just left it on this and it's been, for me, it's been fine. <laughs> I'm just, like I said, uh, this is how I do it. This is probably not what it is optimal, but I just want to say it like I'm able to do it with these set up here and, and we're doing a really, really good job with it. Okay. Now, let me go ahead and get into the last uh, run here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, last run here. And then we can go ahead and showcase uh, the rest of the runes here. I wanted to stop real quick here because I know a lot of people miss that out if they have Spider Queen. Spider Queen, when we think about it, it's like, oh, that's that's one of the top two, uh, you know, AOE farmers out there that you can get, right? So it's all about AOEs and damage and AOEs. And damage. they forget about the fact that it ignored defense on that skill one here. So I wanted to show you guys that. Now, uh, the, the last uh, wild card that I'm going to showcase is Noctura. And if you guys remember, in our previous video, we pulled Popo and we pulled Noctura. Now, uh, you guys are probably going to be like, Childish, Childish, what are you, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing? Like, it's chaotic. You are uh, fighting an evil Chimera. This evil Chimera has the elemental advantage towards you. So you're going to be losing a lot of value on this one. Uh, why would you do that? Well, let me tell you, uh, because if you guys did not know, uh, there is a Sanctify ability called Fearless, which basically takes away that damage reduction that you get when you're fighting a unit uh, that has an elemental advantage over you. And I happened to pull an extra Noctura uh, in between the videos. So I went ahead and built it because not only do I want to utilize it for its crazy amount of abilities that it has. It has the ability to uh, get some additional turns. It has that ability to provide the defense break for my party. Um, it can do a ton of damage here. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, if I'm gonna use it for the other dungeons, I might as well you know, go with that, right? So that's what I went ahead and did. I wanted to go ahead and test it out here again. Um, but if I had to uh, say a couple of things, obviously Noctura is not the optimal unit to build, but I wanna put it out there because I know a lot of people showcase you know, optimal teams perfect. You know, Spider Queen and Noctura, not typically the units you wanna use, but at the end of the day, it just comes down to not what you got, but what you make of what you got. So if I can make this work for me, I know uh, we can make it work for you. Now, uh, the last thing I wanna throw in here as far as uh, another, uh, another unit that can essentially improve the damage that you're bringing as well, that's really, really good for you, uh, is Athena. This is a uh, unit that you can collect uh, through Guild Wars, right? Through your guild. So um, basically, guys, you can use those Guild War points that you collected, uh, those Guild Devotion points that you collected, and you can go ahead and purchase uh, the chips, the pieces for it to go ahead and summon it. Now, Athena has an ability that basically pulls all of the units outside of her, uh, with the exception of herself here, to do uh, essentially do a hit. So it's almost like it's almost like that Druid ability having the counterattack, but it, essentially it's not, right? It just pulls them in. So really, really strong ability. And again, if you get to the point where you have uh, your you know damage dealers that are set up with a ton of a uh, ton of damage here, that is a that is a hefty amount of damage that you can bring to the mix here. So um, again, guys, uh, that is my team. You know, pretty much in a nutshell. Um, hopefully. That information helped you. And if it didn't, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below because I know that we have some super hardcore pro players out there that can uh, provide you guys some more insight that have a lot more experience for you. Disclaimer, let me put it out there right now. This is how I run Evo Chimera. This may not be the optimal way to do it. So again, there's tons of ways to get it done. I just want to show what works for me, okay? Now, again, I didn't go into explaining this, but I just want to put it out there in case anyone hasn't checked it out. When you get into the Evo Chimera, um, you you don't just got to go straight for it like I did right now. Notice that I have the evil guards over here um, that I've already cleared. Uh, I had to take those down first because as you guys uh, see here, there's a little bit of a link. You know, if you look at the chaotic chimera with the chaotic guards and a lawful chimera with the lawful guards, there's a link that's attached to that chimera, which it basically uh, improves the stats of the chimera. So if you want to reduce the amount of stats that it can do or the, the overall stats, the amount of damage you can do and everything, uh, you want to go ahead and take out these evil guards before taking off the evil chimera, right? And you will notice that uh, these guards will reactivate in two hours if you don't uh, get a clear on a chimera. Now, one thing to notice, because I was kind of scared when I was doing this farming was like, oh my God, like I got to like refresh it every single time. Well, if you get a successful clear on evil chimera, the time resets uh, to two hours. So again, if you're constantly farming it, you're not going to have to worry about uh, the evil guard unless you take basically a two hour break. So again, um, obviously, Chimera layer farming, super, super important. And the one to start out with, of course, is going to be the evil Chimera. Why is that? Because I want to go up again. I just want to show you guys one here. 
the the one the only uh these conflict runes here once you get a ton of these conflict runes here you could uh, be able to provide a ton of damage for your damage shooters, which of course will naturally uh affect the amount of damage you could put out for also the chimera uh, chaotic chimera as well as the lawful chimera it's going to drastically uh improve the speed as, as which you can clean uh clear the runs here and then now obviously because of the fact that these runes sell for a lot more than the regular dungeons uh you're just going to be able to get a lot more cow unite and uh it's going to be great uh because you're obviously going to be able to improve some of those runes that you've been collecting right so uh that's pretty much it guys let's go ahead and take a look at the uh runes actually you know what we probably should just go back to that screen because that has all the units right that would probably make sense uh this is what we call an epic fail here on the Childish Plays YouTube channel. Let's go ahead and do that. So uh, here we go, Jungle Heart. This is the setup that we got going on here. Here's that ability that I was talking about, the immunity as well as the heal. And then this is that charm song that uh, extends the buffs and reduces the uh, status of those uh, negative effects here. It also has a self heal on it, but again, that's not the big thing. The big thing is just the extension of the buffs here. So again, nothing crazy on the stats here. We got, I think we're running what, speed, uh, HP, and then we got defense here. So these stats right here make it really, really easy, obviously combined with this powerhouse, uh, the Rock Golem. Now Rock Golem, I'm actually pretty happy about. Um, we've got, we've collected a couple of runes here. Now, again, this is not gonna look, this is gonna be kind of weird because I got like random counter runes and stuff like that. Again, utilizing what you got and just, you know, taking full advantage of it. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. And you can see I was already able to squeeze in a conflict set so I can improve the damage of my uh, my DPS in the back line here. So uh, right now, if there was anything to put out there, if you don't have, uh, you know, the jungle heart yet and you're trying to run this, obviously you should have the jungle heart. But uh, one of the things that gets recommended from the community is maybe slapping on a set of immunity here, because again, that boss can provide a, a debuff that essentially locks down uh, your abilities. And this, of course, this passive here. So if you don't have this passive, this guardian body to uh, protect your uh, protect your party here with the shield, um, you're just you're just gonna get wiped. That's it's plain and simple here. So again, uh, immunity on this one is really good. And of course, uh, if you have this one going behind the uh, uh, jungle heart you're going to be able to go ahead and extend that uh, immunity buff here so it's really, really nice take full advantage of it if you don't have another unit that provides it now uh, here we go with the druid druid again not super crazy we got a uh, berserk blessing set here uh, i'm running speed i think hp and hp here yeah so again not a lot yeah look at these substats oof yeah this is this is bad but again i'm doing whatever i can to get to get a consistent run so i can you know get better runes and go ahead and prove it um elven queen not on a berserk set I actually uh i was I had the speed tune for something else. I think I was doing a Vapor Dreamland, but obviously there's a lot of improvements that I can make here. But at the end of the day, I just needed to be the uh, faster unit so I can go ahead and provide the immunity for my party and then make sure that it's available so that my jungle heart go ahead and uh, extend those buffs and make them last a little bit longer here. So this one here, we got speed, we got HP, and we got HP on that one. Uh, on the back line here, my Demonic Swordsman, I feel like I probably could get away with building this one like in a damaged fashion, but for the time being, I'm just running a little bit more of a... Uh, uh, tank your build here again i ran into some situations where i was uh, dying so i was like okay well i need to go ahead and improve that and uh, i basically threw out through some runes here you can see my even my critical rate is a little bit on the lower end but uh, overall it gets the job done so i'm really really happy with it now here's my holy swordsman holy swordsman look at this i don't even have this rune leveled up here this is kind of a sin like i should have this rune leveled up that's kind of a fail too as well running attack or damage oh my god both runes that's that's this is bad yeah but hey this is good so you guys can see what kind of stats is getting the job done here. Take a look at this uh, critical rate. Again, super low critical rate, but we're running the critical rate lead plus the uh, critical rate buff that we get. So that's a lot. Uh, that's gonna bring it just just about near uh, max critical rate for this unit here. So obviously if I can prove, if I can improve the stats a little bit, then I'll go ahead and do it. But you know, for the time being, that's what's working for me. So I'm gonna go with that. Uh, Spider Queen, again, 77% on this critical rate here. So we're, gonna, we're able to take advantage of that leader skill, basically getting us Darn near cap. Uh, I think that's what, like 96% critical rate. So very, very reliable damage here. Again, if we get that bonus here on the ignore defense, we're going to do a ton of damage with it. Now, uh, we already showcased, I think, the Nocturne. I think I, if I did it, I'll show it already. Again, we're running speed, crit damage, attack. I could probably switch it to go attack or damage attack here, but I had to use uh this speed rune, this uh, wild slot two speed, so I can get uh, the, a little bit more critical rate here uh because i was using it in a different dungeon so rest assured that obviously if i have the critical rate lead from the uh from the holy swordsman i don't have to go too high but because of the fact that i'm going to be utilizing this in other aspects of the game where i'm not going to have that critical rate lead uh, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage and try to make this one self-reliable. And that's a really good thing to point out because, uh, you know, when you first get started, you can, you know, 
change a lot of things here to go ahead and take advantage of the critical rate. But if you get to the point where you're improving your runes and you're making them less reliable on that critical rate, then you can provide a little bit more damage, you know, for your party, which is obviously really, really nice here. But uh, yeah, hopefully that helped out. Take a look at the, the rune sets and the units and the builds and whatnot here. Again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to answering as many as I can. So uh, let's go ahead and get right into the summons here. Again, we have the legendary summon scroll that I believe they got uh, from the, what's it called? I think it was, I think we got it from the, what's it, what's it a, a compensation? I think it was server compensation here. Um, and then of course we were collecting light and dark scrolls between favorite dreamland. And uh, I also, uh, guys, I also purchased that $1.99 uh, pack uh, on a daily basis here so that every three days I can get myself uh, skill cat as well as the uh, light and dark book here. So we got a couple of those. And then I got a couple of mystical scrolls that I collected uh, through Vapor Dreamland. So we're going to go ahead and pop those and see if we can get ourselves this new genie here. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, we're going to do a temple and then we'll do some singles and we'll go ahead and get into uh, the rest of the premium scrolls. Come on now, let's get it popping. Angel of Death. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay, it's it's we, we pulled quite a few of those, but the good thing about this is, is that I think we're already maxed out on our skills here, but we did get another rock golem. So um, definitely got to hold on to that. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and see, see uh, do some singles pulls. Finfolk guard, not nothing I can use. I believe it's a fusible unit or a unit you would use for fusion. Uh, let's see what we get. Uh, Monk, yeah, not gonna use this one here, at least for the time being. Um, just gonna use it for fodder so I can level up some other units here. Ooh, what do we get, what do we get? Barbarian, okay, I, I literally got like seven copies of this unit. Like, I, I don't know if I'm gonna build it right now, but got a lot of copies, so it's got skill up for days. Not skill up for days. All right, can we get another goal? Nope, we're not gonna get another goal, that's okay. Uh, here we go. What do we got here? Divine Priest. Yeah, not a unit that I'm building anytime soon. Uh, but again, if you, any of these units that you see, um, let me know, and I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and take it. Uh, I'll go ahead and take advantage of it, possibly build it for like Guild Wars or something like that. So, um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the Legendary Summon Scroll. Then we're gonna work our way into Light and Dark again, guys. Uh, if you've been uh, following my channel here, um, I haven't really done a lot of Light and Dark summons, but uh, I have not. I have not uh, pulled the LD Nat Five. So. Hoping that today can be the lucky day. Let's see what we get. Oh, nice. We got a copy of Selene here. So that's a nice little surprise. Um, I'm not obviously going to take advantage of this because we do have a Selene um, and we can use it for the Sanctify so we can improve our stats there. So really nice. We can't really get mad at that, right? All right. So basically, I know I want to LD that five, but if we just get gold, then I will be down. Um, I would love a, I would love to have a, a Cleopatra. I would love to have an Arthur. Um, I think Cleopatra would be a really, really strong unit that I can uh, take advantage of here. Oh, we got a lightning. What do we get? Ooh, nice, nice, nice. All right. See, that's that's all we needed. Hattori, Hattori. So I have not seen this one, but I know uh, people have. Let's take a look at it real quick. Okay. Single target ability, 60% chance to poison. Um, attack two times. Uh, two, okay. So, so a little bit more chance to poison and silence. This one here. We got an AOE ability that's silence and poor. Okay. So a little bit lower uh, activation on those uh, poisons, on those debuffs here, but... Uh, again, it goes for all enemies here. All right, take a look at this. Wow, dude, it has an attack that hits six times, 100% of the time it's and, and it has a way of disabling the passive skills for two turns, and attacks two to six will poison uh, the target if they are a critical strike. So obviously this is a unit that we're gonna be building with a high amount of critical rate, um, so we can take full advantage of that here. This is a 70% chance to increase the duration of active poison. Interesting, so that might be fun with a little poison build there. Uh, passive Venom Seal, fo focus poison on enemy weaknesses, increase the attack of 25%, and have a 70% chance to activate, um, to activate the 30%, okay, drain attack poison. Okay, so pretty, pretty cool. All right, all right, so not too bad, not too bad. Uh, really good unit, I mean, we can't really get mad. Can't really get mad here. All right, let's go ahead and open this up. Come on, come on. Oh, uh, what do we got, what do we got? All right, I think we already got Boxer. Miss Boxer Mui, yeah, we do, we do. All right, let's go ahead and pop this one. What do we got next? What do we got next? We get another gold, no gold. Let's go ahead and get this. Okay, Cupid. Obviously, Cupid is a really good unit, guys. So hold on to that one if you do. I actually got two or three copies of this one. So uh, if I really need a healer down the road, I'll go ahead and build it. All right, let's see what we got here. I think this is Mrs. Alice. Uh, yes, we is. Uh, again, nothing that I'm gonna build right away. We're just looking for the gold right now. We already got a gold, so we can't really get mad here. Come on now. Ah, man, that's unfortunate. But that's okay, guys. We did pull... Um, a new, uh, another uh, dupe, uh, NAC5, we got the Selene. Um, in addition to that, we also did get, um, like I said, we, we the goal of this video was to showcase the successful uh, layer team. So now 
we can you know collect those uh, conflict runes improve the damage of our party and of course uh get back into the regular dungeon farming so that we can you know collect ourselves some more uh, runes that we're looking for some immunity runes some desperation runes some more berserk runes because you can always use some more berserk runes but uh either way guys that's going to be it for this video once again a huge shout out to calibria crystal guardians for sponsoring this video thank you guys so much for your support over the past five videos it really means a lot to me and once again if you guys are watching this video and you're like you know what childish i think i want to try this game out well then go ahead and stop what you're doing head on over to the youtube description down below okay click on the link so you can download the game and start it for free uh it would greatly support the channel okay so that's going to be it guys Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Childish, Childish Place, checking out. Take care, and we will see you all in the next one. I'm out.